Hi, this is Tor from TC here at uh, Sweetwater in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I'm here with Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater today. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. It's been a blast. It's been so much fun so far, and we've been doing some tone prints. Yeah. So um, you actually mentioned before we started out that, uh, that Sweetwater started doing uh, custom sounds. Yeah, that's right. We have a heritage going way back, almost 35 years now, of uh, originally one of the first products we made was uh, sound libraries for the K250, the yeah. Kurzweil, the original Kurzweil uh, sampling keyboard that people like Stevie Wonder and Kenny Rogers were using yeah. at the time. And uh, they would call up and want to buy the sounds, and then it grew from there with them wanting to buy accessories and recording gear and things for mm -hmm. their to go with their keyboard and things. And here we are today. The company has continued growing. But over the years, we've done a lot of sound design for the different Kurzweils and other keyboards yeah. and other instruments as well. So, so this whole creating of sounds is a big part of what we do here at Sweetwater. Yeah. That's really cool. And I mean... This is pedal, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit different. It's very different, yeah. But um, but the thing is that one of the things that was really cool when you came in, you had like brought this bunch of uh, of old stump boxes that mm -hmm. you really can't get anymore. You know, right. Really collectible things, um, and it's actually one of the things that we've been doing a lot of tone prints with different artists. But uh, one of the most requested things we had is tone prints that kind of recreate the sound of these old sought after pedals. Right that you can't get anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have them, you don't necessarily want to take them out on stage or take them on tour with you. Exactly, because they are you know, they're worth a lot of money and you they can't might replace break, them. So, yeah. so this is what we're doing here today, is actually trying to redo some of the sounds from these old pedals without actually covering them one by one. Right, like you, you, you had said earlier, we're capturing the spirit yeah. of the sound of those pedals. What do we have here now? This is the, uh, the Hartman Analog Flanger, and it is uh, basically a boutique version of uh, an original uh, electroharmonics yeah. uh, flanging pedal. And so it, it recreates that sound all in the analog domain. It's a, it's a nice sounding pedal because it's kind of subtle. It's not an over the top flanger, no. but it lets you get some nice chorus type sounds yeah. and some good sweeping flanging kind of sounds. And uh, I'm anxious to see what we can do with the Vortex. Yeah, too, let's uh, try it on. Uh, I actually, sounds. I remember, and that's one of the things I always tell people when I do demos for some of the pedals and when I get to the flanger, it's like, that's actually a lot of the old uh, sounds that you'd think would be a chorus is actually flanging, like mm -hmm. uh, Andy Summers from the Police. That's right. actually that kind of uh, that kind of pedal. Right, or right. Yeah, they weren't using yeah. a chorus pedal; they were using a flange yeah. pedal. So uh, cool. Let's check it out. Yeah, and magically, a, a distortion pedal appeared <laughs> yeah. in the photo. Basically, uh, a lot of times, overdrive and distortion kind of takes makes it easier to hear the differences in, and the tonal nuances of a flanger. It kind of brings right. out the best of that pedal. You have that extra harmonic content for the flanger to work upon as, exactly. it's, as it's sweeping through. Yeah. So we kind of used it both to dial it in and also you can do a lot of cool sounds with a flanger and an overdrive yeah. pedal at the same time. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> mapped out now. Right. So it's more or less of a tone print. Mm -hmm. So at the at the 12 o'clock position on the delay time, we're the same as this is. Yeah, exactly. And then you can kind of you change that say, delay yeah. time, which which changes, you were telling me, the width, the, yeah. the height of the flanging? Yeah, we can kind of hear it just to, just to you know, kind of say what it does. So it's basically how high up the, the flanging goes. So if mm -hmm. it's uh, cranked all the way back, it's going to go all the way up to the point where it's almost unnoticeable. It goes really... Okay. Whereas if you back it down, it, it's a deeper sound. So okay. I'll just crank it all the way up so you can hear. Right. All the way up to the stratosphere, so to speak. And then if you crank it back, it's right. more of a mellow sound. Right. And uh, the Hartman doesn't have that control, so it's a fixed setting. So mm -hmm. we basically made it so that when you put it at 12 o'clock, you get the same as this. Right. And the, all the other ones are basically mapped exactly the same as that. We just, yeah, we just mapped so, so the speed matches up and the depth. And yeah, and yeah. color is feedback, so mm -hmm. there you go. But man, it's really close. Yeah. You want to play a couple of uh, samples? We'll do... Sure. So I think we started out with the uh, that kind of subtle uh, Andy Samuels thing. So um, that's another tone print. 
Yeah, another uh, success. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, what should we call this one? What do you think? Let's call this one the Electric Vortex. I like that. It's like a, it's a, it's a cross between the uh, exactly Vortex right. and the Electric Mist. Was exactly cool. right. And there we go. Excellent. Another tone print. That was easy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs>